evening. Uh, we're going to continue our study tonight to serve or be served. Why did you come? Um, this master key number six, for those of you all that have your books, we're on page 34. Um, and we are still dealing with 12 master keys and catching the pastor's spirit. And we started last week on master key number six to serve or be served. Why did you come? We, we talked about a lot of different things. So tonight we're going to start down. I'm going to start at the third paragraph. Uh, and it reads, Jesus didn't waste his time trying to convince the scribe, Pharisees, or Herod that he was the son of God. There was consequently people who could discern that he was the son of God. It was to them that he made himself available. It's not the pastor's job to tell anyone that he is a man of God or the man of God. In other words, you may hear pastors say, I'm a man of God. It is not the pastor's job to tell everyone that he's a man of God. Once the men and women within the church discern the gift that is within their midst. And the gift again relates back to Jeremiah 3.15 where God said, I'm going to give, I will give you pastors according to my heart. So the pastor is referenced to, or shepherd is referenced to as a gift, as a gift to the church. So that makes me as the pastor, I'm a gift to the church. Now, let me say this for an example. If I give you, uh, let's say, so, Kat, what, what, what is a, a, a desire or need? What is a need that you pretty much you, you would need? You and also Deacon Darrell, just off the top of your head. Yeah, just look, think within yourself of a, of a need that you may have. Financial. Financial, okay. Well, God said, okay, look, I give you pastors according to my heart. They shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. So when you acknowledge and accept the pastor as a gift to you from God, then there is, remember we talked about this in a few of the keys, that, you know, God releases that supernatural knowledge or wisdom. Um, and it's the pastor's job to teach the people uh, because, uh, like you said, a financial um, uh, breakthrough you need. So what wisdom, instead of saying, I'm going to lay hands on you, your bank account going to be filled with money. No, God expects for us to sit down and counsel with you as a pastor. Let's find out, number one, why are you in need of a financial blessing? Or how are you operating or what are you doing with your finances that you have right now? Let's sit down and look. Maybe you may be living above your financial means, or maybe there's some money being wasted or some areas that you can do that will, would, or you could cut out here and there. Um, that's the job of a pastor when he's called upon to ask. Now, most people say, well, how's that? Well, people hire f uh, financial advisors every day or certified public accountants. Well, God say, I gave you a gift that's among you. <clears throat> that is the pastor. So everything that you need because I gave them to you according to my heart. I know more, <clears throat> excuse me, than anyone else. So I'll channel whatever knowledge or know-how through him to you. Uh, I'll show you an example. Remember um, uh, Elijah, God dried up the brook and told the ravens, bring no more meat to him. And then what went on, he said, go to Zarephath, there you're going to find a widow woman. Uh, now, in the midst of a famine, there was a famine in the land, shortage of food and everything. She was getting ready to cook. They're going to eat their last meal, <clears throat> and that was going to be it. Well, Elijah said, cook me one first, thank you, you know, and serve me. When, when he did that, when she did that, obeyed that, that, and that's one thing that most people have to understand is that when the pastor, who is a gift from God, when he gives you instructions, it's up to you. He can't make you follow it. It's up to you to follow it. So she went on and did what he said. Then he told her to go and get some bar or some, some, some uh, jars from your neighbors. And then God 
supernaturally, there's a miracle started where it just start overflowing in the midst of a famine. So that's the thing you have to understand is always utilize, you know, and for those that are watching, never take your pastor for granted. Most people take their pastor for granted because he laugh and joke. He's a human being like everyone else. But when it come down to life changing matters, never take your pastor for granted. Never do that. Jesus had a close relationship with his disciples, you know, but when it came down to, to life changing matters, then you have to, you have to dis disciple through uh, 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 that, that part of your life. So again, now hope you understand that when we talk about supernatural, you know, that's what you want God to do when he released that supernatural um, to you in the midst. It's all through the Bible. Even when Elijah told the woman who made him a room upstairs, he said, well, you know what, go and tell her she's going to be with child. And she was a woman that was barren, meaning that she couldn't have children. But after he had spoke that, that's another thing you have to understand. And this is where people have to, this is where it get kind of like tricky at if you don't watch it. Uh, God has empowered your pastor that he could speak, pronounce blessings. You know, uh, also uh, he can pronounce curses. But then you have to watch it because you have false prophets, false apostles that would try to manipulate the minds of the people. And the Bible even said it, that they would do these things, signs and wonders in front of the people, and it is still lure them off. Now, when I say can speak blessings or curses, it's in the Bible. They did it. Uh, <clears throat> uh, even with uh, Elijah, when he was bald-headed and the children was poking fun at him, the Bible say he spoke a curse upon them and the she-bear came out and killed them all. You know, so... Those are, are the things you have to understand. But if pastors don't understand their call or why they were chosen, then it is not beneficial to the body of Christ. Um, it makes no difference if there's five members in the congregation or 5,000. If that leader does not know or understand their purpose, as Miles Monroe said, he said, if you don't know the purpose of a thing, then you would abuse a thing. So you have to know the purpose because everything that God does, he has a purpose and a plan according to his will. So you, have, you may have a lot of pastors who are pastoring but don't understand their purpose or, 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 or God's calling on their life. So they think just a good sermon, a good preaching, a good, a good teaching is, is what it is, what it's all about. And that's not the case. It's for more than that. It's way for more than that. Pastorship, it doesn't mean anything because anybody can, can teach a good lesson or preach a good word. But it is the supernatural power that comes with it that you have to understand, the supernatural power. So the thing about it is, once you understand and, and pastors understand and the members understand the purpose of a pastor, why did God give us a pastor? Why, am I, why was I chosen a pastor? So you have to understand. And because there may be 5,000 followers doesn't mean that God has put his supernatural to it. You know, people will follow crowds for a different reason. Uh, Jesus said he knew that uh, some of the people that followed him was following him because of the loaves, you know. And then you have some that's spectators. You have some that's just want to see what's going on, uh, all kind of things. Then the enemy put people in the camp and all of that. So you have to understand uh, that. We're on page 34. We're that fourth paragraph. So, again, it's not the pastor's job to tell everyone that he is a man of God. No. You have to, the, the, the people, once the people within the body of Christ, the church, discern the gift with, 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 uh, which is in their midst. So if you never discern the pastor, if you look at me as, oh, he's just the pastor of the church, oh, that's just old Baines, do you have not discerned the gift that is in your midst? Now, here's what I want you to understand. I said this years ago. No, most people have a misconception about pastorship. They figure, you know, your, 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 your shirt should be buttoned up tight and, and you don't laugh with people and you just, good day, how are you, sister, bless you, God bless you, go on and move around. No, 
No, no. As leadership, you have to know where you're at, you know, know who you are in Christ. It's okay to laugh. Jesus laughed. He talked. He communicated uh, with his people. <clears throat> so that, those are the things that you have to do. Okay. So uh, once you begin to honor and respect your pastor as the true man of God, you know, once you acknowledge this in the midst, then you, you have to begin to honor and respect. So also they would catch the pastor's spirit and serve him. Again, most people look at that, oh, I ain't serving no man. He, no, 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 no. You don't look at it like that. You're not serving a man. You're serving the vision that God placed through the man. Uh, so if you think that you're serving the man, then you have missed a whole misconception of it. You know, and if people call you flunkies and tell you this and that, don't listen to that. You have to understand the gift that God set before you. So once you understand the gift that God set before you, even Jesus said, when they want to know who's the greatest in the kingdom, it, it wasn't what they thought the apostles, the prophets. He said, he that become a servant unto his brother. Now on the reverse angle of that, that could make them the greatest because as I tell people all the time, because you, you have a, 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 a title calling as a pastor, apostle, what have you, it doesn't mean that you have a platform where people worship you. No, no. I see, when you think about it, on a Sunday morning, everyone is sitting there and, and, and you're the one that's moving and working. You're the one that's sweating while they're sitting. You are serving. We are servants one to another. We're serving you the word of God. You know, if you if if Sister Kathy call and say, Bishop, you know, Kennedy is sick. I need you to come and pray for him right now. If it's two or three o'clock in the morning as a pastor, I get up and go and pray, you know, or sometimes I, I get text messages late at night that say, Bishop, you know, pray for my grandmother. Or, or I'll get a text to say, pray for someone now. Uh, oftentimes when people say, okay, I'll be praying for you, in reality, we know people don't pray. That's just a figment of speech to say. So what I always do is that when people text me and say, Bishop, put my, put my sister on the prayer list, we're going to put their names on the prayer list, we're going to pray for them. Depending on the circumstance, I'll, I'll sit there and begin to pray in my spirit. And while I'm praying in my spirit, I'm actually texting the whole prayer to what I'm praying to God with, and I text it to the people from that point. So it's all about that. So, okay, they would catch the pastor's spirit and serve him, so God reciprocates uh, these acts and ministers to them. You know, understand uh, that references to pastor is the man of God, uh, that there are godly women who are pastors also, who are called by God to pastor local churches whenever he, him, or his or use it, it could mean that. In reflection of our previous study of Moses and the 70, we find that his replacement was not of the 70. God chose Joshua, a young teenage warrior. In Exodus 17 and 9, he says, And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go out fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. Exodus 24, 12 through 13, and the Lord said unto Moses, come up to me into the mount and be there, and I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments, which I have written that thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose up and his minister Joshua, and Moses went up into the mount of God. Again, if people would only realize this one thing the pastor is necessary if the pastor was not necessary to your life-changing experiences then why did God give them why did God continue them he could have stopped it you know uh, now most people might say well that was on the Old Testament well now this continued on in the New Testament so why did God continue most people look and say, you know, I'm, you know, uh, most people would say, I'm not a big fan of titles. Well, I'm sorry, I am. I'm a big fan of titles. I'm a believer, believer of titles because I understand titles. 
If you don't understand titles, then I don't expect for you to be a big believer of titles. And I'll tell you why. Uh, titles, if they, was, if they were not important, then why did God even establish them? Was a man that just established a title? And even if it was man, oftentimes we say that's man-made, but now the Bible say that God gave man the knowledge. So I'm a big fan of titles because I understand titles, you know. So what do you mean you understand titles? A lot of people don't, don't, are not big fans of titles because they don't understand titles. Titles are levels of positions that God has in his kingdom. Same way in the army. When you look through the Bible in, in the book of Kings and all of them, in the army, they had titles. It, titles is another word used as your rank in authority. Uh, also, here, here's a, another thing that now, now because I don't want to float your boat, and you're thinking, oh, wow, you know what? That means I'm a, I'm a minister. I'm an I'm apostle. I'm, I'm right there. No, here's another thing. Uh, the part that levels it out, the reason why I say I'm a big fan of titles, because I understand the rankings and what titles mean. Also, I understand that there, there is, what word I want to use? There's consequences. There's duties that's attached to titles. There's assignments that are, that are attached to titles. And, and so, therefore, if you don't carry, carry it out, According to the will of God, then you held accountable. You're held accountable. Uh, I, I tell young young people who want to pastor, and I tell them, it's more than just being a good singer or a good hooper or a good teacher. Or you went to Bible college. That means nothing because God said He'll take the foolish things of the world and conquer the wise. So that has nothing to do with it. You have to understand this here. The Bible says that. Uh, obey them that have the rule over you for they watch out for you. And I tell them this, don't, 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 don't take that lightly. Because, oh, see, you got, no, no, that's not what he's saying. He said, I want you to respect and honor and obey my leader that have authority over you. So when they come to pray, they may do it with joy, not with grief. Because if it was with grief, then it's not profitable unto you. Now, here's the part I tell them, accountability. Titles also come with accountability. He said that they, may, that they may give an account for you. That means you are accountable. I, as the pastor, am accountable for the people of God. I'm accountable for your, 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 your life growth, your spiritual growth. You know, I'm accountable, and that comes with what you're being fed. You know, so I'm, I'm held accountable of that. Uh, you all belong to God. We all belong to God. You all are souls of God. So here's the point is that I am accountable for every soul. I have to give an account for every soul. But now watch this. It does not mean that every soul is accountable to God as a sheep because there are some souls that that is referred to as goats. Those that are rebellious, those that don't want to obey you know it's like a goat nature that's why he say you know the sheeps and the goats would tarry together and I'll do the separation so I don't have to separate the sheeps and the goats I just leave them together God does that you know he said I'll take care of that the wheat and the tear say let them grow together he'll do the separation my assignment is is to reflect as much as Christ as I can all of him really before the people. I have to listen to the Holy Spirit. I have to be led by the Holy Spirit. I have to teach you how to be led by the Holy Spirit, how to walk in the Spirit, how to live in the Spirit, and all of those things. So I'm, I'm accountable uh, for your lives, you know. And I tell young preachers that now that's a, that's a big, 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 that's a big load to carry right there, you know. So uh, Exodus 12, uh, 24, 12, and 13 uh, you know, he, we talked about that. So in Exodus chapter 17, verse 9, Moses did not give Joshua a position, but made a request of Joshua. 
He obeyed the request in every aspect. In chapter 24, verses 12 and 13, we find him ministering to and serving Moses. Remember that he was not one of the original 70. Joshua wasn't one of the original 70. And sometimes as pastorship, you reach out of the circle. You know, he just liked hanging around the man of God. Because sometimes uh, you'll find people that's not a part of the church. They just like hanging out with the man of God. I told you all about my life under my pastor leadership. I just love hanging out with my pastor. Some days I would just go to his house on my lunch break and I'll just sit there. Now I knew that he wasn't God, but I knew the closest thing to God in the flesh was my pastor. Now y'all got to understand that. No, I didn't make him a God. I say the closest thing in the flesh to God was my pastor. And, and I'll show you something. Jesus was the closest thing. He was God himself, but he was the closest thing in the flesh that represented God. Now, this, this is where I, I want y'all to get this at. That's why when, 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 when Philip them were walking with him, uh, say, you know, hey, look, yo, Jesus, uh, hey, you, we've been with you all this time. You know, you keep talking about the Father. When when we going to see him? We want to see the Father that you're talking about. Jesus say, I've been with you this long and yet you still don't believe. If you have seen me, you have seen my Father. And he said, and, and watch what he said. It, 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 just because they couldn't hit that, grasp that, he say, if you can't understand that or believe that, then believe in the works that I do. Because the works that I do is not of my own, but of the Father. So the pastor is the closest thing in the flesh that the people is going to see that supposed to, it should represent God. God said, I give you pastors after my what? Heart. So we represent, we are carriers of God's heart. Um, so in Exodus 33 and 11, and the Lord spoke unto Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friends. And he turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. Now I want to go back and reference to something I said, that even Jesus told the people when he was referencing that, he said that, the scripture says that, and he thought it not robbery, to be equal to God. He said, me and my father is one. And the Bible said he thought it not robbery to be equal to God. Now, so the thing of it is, is that we should become one. We, we ought to be one with Christ. You know, we ought to be one with Christ. Because if you're not one with Christ, it means you don't have the Holy Spirit. And, and, and if you are one with Christ, he says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall cast out demons. They shall lay hands on the sick. So when you become one with Christ, then what you do is that you have, you have access to the supernatural power of God. This is why even Elijah, the Bible said, he prayed that it wouldn't rain and it didn't rain. You, I mean, it was, it was some, man, it, it was some stuff. I, I love going back reading those things because that gives me a way of access to God in a way that I never knew before. Not, not the old prayers that we learned that brought us over. Lord, I thank you that my, 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 my bed wasn't my cooling board and my sheets wasn't my wine, whatever it is. You know, I, I think about how, how Gideon, when he said, wait a minute, God, I, you know, you got to show me this. I tell you what, God even turned back. I, I think I, I want to say it right. I, I get so excited when I think about it. God even turned back the time light to cast a shadow for him to show it. it I, I, I don't even want to talk about it because I may mess it up because, you know, I go to thinking about stuff in my mind, go to going well ahead of, of where I really want to go. But what I'm telling you is this here is that you have to understand the respect of it because God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So it was God in the flesh in Christ. Now that Christ is gone, he said that my Father is going to send the promise, his Holy Spirit. Now his Holy Spirit is in us. We are filled with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> now, 
what happens? If, if you are filled with the Holy Spirit, it can't be no doubt. And you know what? A lot of people uh, 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 come to, to holy gatherings is what I like to call it. I don't like to say coming to church. When a church come together, it's a holy gathering. And they are not filled with the Holy Spirit. And then when they hear that, 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 that call to say, you know, okay, do you believe now? Do you believe in Jesus? You believe in the Holy Spirit? Have you, have you received the Holy Spirit? A lot of people, they, they, they'll just say yes and don't even know because they, they don't know, you know. Or, or a lot of people, uh, because they, they think, oh, I'd be too ashamed if I, listen, if you don't know for sure that you have received the Holy Spirit, then the safest thing to do is say, you know what, I don't receive. Now, when, now, now look, when, when you believe in Jesus, and you accept him and believe in him. And it's not about coming to church. If you think coming to church means I believe in Jesus, you got another thing coming. No, no, no. Oh, I believe in him because I'm a minister. No, no, no. Oh, I believe in him. I'm a deacon. No, no, no. I believe in him because I sing in the choir. No, that don't have nothing to do with it. If you have not truly accepted Christ as your Savior and become one with him, him as your Savior, then you have not received the Holy Spirit. You know, and it was okay because look, look what, what, what they did when they was going through. They met a group of people. They said, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? They said, we have not so much as heard of the Holy Spirit. So he taught them about the Holy Spirit. And then the Bible said he blew up on them and say, receive the Holy Spirit. And they received the Holy Spirit. No, the Bible don't give no, 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 no uh, picture that they fell out. Or they went to speaking in tongues, they went to running, and all of that. No, no, it doesn't do that. In fact, on Acts in chapter 1, when it talk about the Spirit of God came up on them and they spoke in, if there was clovers of tongues and they spoke, it was languages that they spoke. Not nothing, you know, that we think that is spooky. It was languages that they spoke, you know. Uh, so the thing of it is, is that you have to understand what it all means. So Joshua was so involved in serving Moses that he became engulfed in worshiping and serving the Lord, as well as the vision of the house. Joshua, again, he wasn't part of the 70 that Moses called. But Joshua was so involved in serving Moses, his pastor, that he became engulfed in worshiping and serving the Lord, as well as the vision of the house. And that's what it's all about. You're not serving the man, you're serving the vision. You know, that God has given the man because the vision is not his personal vision. The vision is for us. It's for us. It's for your life changing experience. It's for your supernatural things from God. If you, if you never serve the man of God, then you never serve the vision of the house. No serving don't mean you come take my shoes off and you hold my water and, you know, no, you know, serving is doing whatever it takes to serve your man of God to show the love. Jesus served the disciples washing their feet. You know, I'll show you something else. Um, the Bible say once he sent them all out to minister two by two, you know, what a lot of people don't know, it say the women stayed there and they, they ministered unto Christ. No, they didn't preach to him. That wasn't what ministering was talking about. They ministered to his knees. They made sure he had food to eat, his clothing. They served him. Even when he died, they served him by taking his body, wrapping it upright, putting the perfumes in there. And, and, and even when, when, when he told them on the third day, they went to the tomb looking for him. So serving is because, look, that was the vision. So that was the vision. Now look, what do you say? Well, okay, pastor, you know what? Look, every love offering y'all give, every offering you give, whatever you do is all part of serving. It's all part of serving. People don't even know this. Giving is worshiping God. You know, that, that's Bible. Giving is worshiping God. 
So the thing about it is, he said, that's why earlier we talked about this in one of the other keys. He said, we talked about, and it may have been key number one. Think about Joseph. Joseph served Pharaoh. He served him physically. And not just Pharaoh, but he had to serve the baker and the butcher also. And, and he physically worked to serve. So see, God, God looked at everything. Watch, watch this. Here's another one. For people who like to talk about, talk about prostitutes and stuff. Look, the prostitute with nobody else. Somebody shot all them, them, them hypocritical believers. They, they wouldn't serve uh, the prophets of God. And their life was in danger. They was getting ready to kill them. But Rahab said, y'all come on in. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Locked the door. Risk her own life. Hid them in her house. And, and lured them out of the window. And, and she said, look, just remember me and my family. And you know something? Watch this, what God did. Why people go to talking. I tell everybody, we all got some, some stuff in our families. Jesus came down through that lineage of Rahab. You know, and all she did was serve the men of God. You know, that you, you never know. See, when you go back and look at, look, when you women go back and, and men, and you look at that story of Ruth and Naomi, all she was telling her to do, go serve the king. Go sit at his feet. He's going to be at the wine prison. Just go sit there and don't say nothing. Clean yourself, put on some perfume, and whatever he tell you to do, do it. See, here's one misconception that, that, that we have as, as I'm going to say as um, not sure, not too sure believers. That's what I call them kind of people that say, Lord, here I am. Use me however you want to use me. But when God start wanting to use you, you complain. Oh, Lord, we got to go to church again. Oh, God, what time we going to get out of here? Oh, we singing that same song. Oh, I don't feel like just complaining, complaining. Oh, you know what? I'll know what I'll do. I'll get that church started at 10. I'll get there about 10, 30, 10, 45. I won't have to go through all that other... So, but, but we say, Lord, you, that, that's what I call those not so, because they're not sold out all the way. See, when you're sold out all the way, then you'll know, wait a minute. Jesus said, look, you don't own yourself, I own you. You've been bought with a price. No. No, you've been bought with a price. It's, it's his will. You know, he, here's another one while we're talking about Rahab. You know what? Again, I'm going to call these those two goody-goody want to be Christians, you know. Oh, I can't do this. I, but look, he, he told, he told, um, help me out. He married the prostitute. Gomer. Hosea married Gomer. Gomer was the prostitute. God told him to marry because God, see, everything in your life, God has an ordained purpose for it. And when she left him and went back to her lovers, he said, you go and get her several times. And, and, and watch this here, the children she was having. So God remarkably say, this is how Israel is to me. Every time she goes back to her lover, I accept her back. That's how we are. That's why I, now I'm going to drop this in here. I'm, I'm going to drop this in and I'm coming right back. That's why I tell people in marriage, why do you expect a perfect husband or a perfect wife when you're not a perfect bride yourself? Oh, look, Lord have mercy. I ought to get an amen on that one. We are the bride of Christ. And we're not perfect. Why do you get so mad and angry when, when, when you find out, oh, they cheated. You cheat on Jesus. It's called spiritual adultery. What do he do? Forgive. And what he told us to do? Forgive. Forgive. You know, forgive. So I just had to throw that in. So Joshua was so involved in serving Moses, he became engulfed for worshiping and serving God. Now watch this. 
as well as a vision of a house. Even when Moses left the tabernacle to minister in other areas, Joshua remained there and continued working on the dreams of the prophet. The young warrior loved Moses and served him with faithfulness and loyalty. Now everybody shout faithfulness. Faithful. Everybody shout loyalty. loyalty. That's been your biggest hindrance right there. We want to be faithful and loyal in our own way. But no, no, no. You got to be faithful and loyal God's way. See? And that's been the biggest problem of believers is our faithfulness and our loyalty. You know, oh, he could pray good, but he ain't faithful. She could sing good, but she ain't law. He can preach good, but he does, he's not faithful or law. But Joshua was faithful and law to Moses. Now, Moses' character and his standing with God impressed Joshua. The people esteemed the relationship between two. Now, was Moses a perfect leader? No. Moses didn't make it into the promised land. It's not because he died. It's because God told him to go speak to the rock that the rock could give water. He went and smote the rock and then he said some insulting words to God's people. And so God didn't let him go into the promised land. He allowed Joshua to do it. So again, you got to understand that we're here to serve God. Whatever it, it, see, watch this here. Watch this here. You may be thinking about something crazy. Oh, that ain't crazy. That, I can't, I can't do that. I, I, okay, if ain't nothing working for you in what you're doing, then try what the man of God said. It can't hurt you no better than what you already is. I mean, Daryl Joe, you say financial. And, 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 and I'm not saying I'm doing this, but I'm saying, then a man of God say, well, you know what? You know, Kathy, uh, how much money you got? Uh, $20. So that $20. Daryl Joe, how much money you got? Oh, man, I, I, got, I got $50. So that $50. Oh, what? No, you know, I can't get my lap. Okay. You ain't got enough to do what you need. You just say you need a 200 you're 150 short. You just said you needed 75, but you, you don't have but 20. Why not try? You know, but your faith had to be there. See, there are times that me and my wife went to church. We gave every dime we had. We had no money, no money for gas, no money for lunch the next day, but we just believed God. And you know what? I would get out that truck, didn't have no money, and I just get out the truck with my operator, and we, we walk, and there it is, five dollars on the ground. I, oh, thank you, Jesus. See? And th th this because that's where my faith is. Look at the widow woman. She only had a little meal, and he say, "Give me that." And look what happened. You know, so I'm saying, you know, you have to be engulfed with it. You have to be engulfed with it. If you're not engulfed, you know, I mean, people, you, you, listen. I had told some people at this altar one time when the spirit moved. And I, I'm not the one that jump up and just go to prophesy, but I move with the spirit. And I told each of them personally, I say, the spirit of God say, go look for the house. Look for this kind of door. Spirit gate, certain look for this kind of door. Not any kind of house, but look for this kind of door. You know that one. This one, you know, eh, neither one of them did it. Then one called back, oh, praise God. Thank God I'm going to get my praise report. You know, we got a house. And I said, oh, well, praise God. Okay. Uh, well, we renting it. <laughs> that ain't what God said. But see, they, they took their own understanding and they wouldn't follow what God, they was too lazy to go look. When my wife said she wanted a house and we went to look and she didn't want a corner house, we wanted one with burglar bars and we looked, we looked, we looked, we looked. We took a key from the house from the hood and opened up the house in the suburbs. We knew that was the one. When we saw it, we say this is it. We went in there, prayed and everything and went to cleaning it and hadn't talked to nobody. 
In fact, if they would have called the laws, we would have went to jail because we were, we were like trespassing. But that was a sign from God because I took a key from Carrotwood Street over here off of Lay Road and went way over here to the Greenspoint area and to the suburbs and, and, and opened up the door with it. And the house was fully burglar barred. See? And then watch this to show you how God does. And this is because I, we both served our man of God. Watch this here. They, we only bid it 46, I told y'all, at 995 for the house. That was way below market. The cheapest house in the neighborhood was like 59.1. And they told us there's no way possible we would get the house. We got the house. And then when we sold the house, we owed 40000 And the woman who put the bid in for the house, because we, we had put a contract to have another house built, she didn't get approved. And then the second time around, uh, the, 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 the realtor raised the price up double. And the same woman said she had to have it. If it's a pastor lived here, I got to have this house. She got approved for the higher amount. We made a 50% profit. And the first thing we did, we gave our 10% to the church. We put the other part down on the house. So see, when you obey, when you obey, see, what you got to do is don't look at your pastor as just, oh, I know him. Oh, that's my daddy. Oh, that's my brother. That's my brother-in-law. Oh, they ain't nobody. They ain't, listen, no, 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 no. I've been knowing Baines for 30 years. No, 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 no. Respect the anointing that's on the pastor's life. Remember, God said, I give you pastor after my own heart. So here it is, Joshua. Let me hear on up here. He served Moses. Remember what we told you earlier, God will do that supernatural, attach it to you, what he did with Joseph. Joseph, see, most people only get a part of the story of Joseph. They say, oh, yeah, Joseph did this and that. But the Bible said that Joseph became a father unto Pharaoh. See, that, that was deep. So now, how does that beneficial? Because Moses' character and his standing with God impressed Joshua, the people, esteem the relationship between the two. Now, how does the benefit, uh, does that benefit the multitude in each church? Many people today are watching how the people of the church serve their pastor's vision. There are members within the church who so earnestly have their pastor's heart. Their loyalty, labor of love, and faithfulness in serving causes them to stand with their pastor in spite of negating circumstances. Now this type of loyalty and commitment impresses those all around them. Even the banks look for that. We try to get the loan from the banks, they want to see how many deacons signed on the loan. Now without speaking a word, mighty men and women will show involvement fervor, intensity, and determination in the support towards the pastor. At first glance, they appear to be ordinary workers in the field, but whether a grunt, moan, or sighs heard from the pastor, they begin to change into warriors, ready to go to war. You know, ready to go to war. Anything wrong, well, well, who did what? Well, ready to go to war. Some used to say, you know, some used to say they talk good talk. Some used to say, I'll cut you about my bishop. I'll cut you. Yeah. Okay. Where they at now? Boy, they gone. See, words mean nothing to God. It's our actions. You know, mighty men and women, they can pray, work, and literally rip the head from the lion or the bear. That's why Peter was so engulfed with Jesus when it came to Jesus, a soldier. Peter cut his ear off and Jesus had stop. No, no, no. Put it away. It's not time to use it yet. So a pastor knowing foremost that God and his congregation are with him acquires an, an awesome fear and reverence towards God and a raging <coughs> hatred and boldness against the kingdom of darkness. And that's what it's all about. 
We're going to read these scriptures here and we're going to be done. Joshua 1 and 5, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsaken thee. These are what they was telling Joshua. In Joshua 1, 16 and 18, and they answered Joshua saying, all that thou commandest us, we will do. And, and whithersoever thou sendest us, we will go. According as we hearken unto Moses in all things, so will we hearken unto thee. Only the Lord thy God be with thee as he was with Moses. Whosoever he be that doeth rebel against thy commandments and will not hearken unto thy words in all that thou commandest him, he shall be put to death. Only be strong and of good courage. They were telling Joshua, anybody rebel against you, don't worry about it. We, we, we gonna deal with them. Now, I'm not telling y'all, don't y'all try that here, you'll be in prison. No, this is what, how they operated back then. In Joshua 3 and 7, and the Lord said unto Joshua, this day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all of Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. So, again, people, you have to understand if you say, Lord, I'm here, try doing what God asks you to do. Look, it's not, it's not by accident that you're where you at now. It's not by accident. Sometimes, even with the, with the, with the uh, rich young ruler, he asked Jesus a question. He said, what do I have to do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said, well, you know, he said, yeah, yeah, I know, I know the command. I kept that from my childhood up. He said, well, you lack one thing. Go and sell what you have and distribute among the poor. The Bible say he walked away because look what Jesus told him. He said, you lack opportunity. And, and when he told him that, the Bible say he put his head down and walked away sad. Walked away sad. See, and that's the whole thing. That's the whole thing you have to understand is don't get it twisted because you're serving your pastor. You're serving the vision of God. God sees, and you have to make sure it's from your heart and not to be seen. God sees, and when God sees your loyalty, see, it's not important that everybody see you. It's not important people see you walking with the pastor's Bible and all of that. And it, that's not important. It's the hidden things. It's the hidden things that you do. The Bible says you do those things in secret. He'll reward you out openly. When you get to those parts, but you have to make sure that you're faithful and you're loyal. It ain't about saying nothing about it. See, you, you, whatever you're doing for the pastor to ease it for him or whatever the case may be. See, here's the last thing I, I, I want to tell you. In the country, they knew how to serve their pastor. They didn't have a lot of resources. But when they call a pastor in every Sunday, now y'all don't have to invite us. Every Sunday, every Sunday, uh, uh, and I can only speak what they did down in Louisiana, because that's everything I've been reared upon is how they did in Louisiana, down south Louisiana. Uh, as my grandmother and grandfather would always say, is that every Sunday, when, 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 when the uh, mama, wife, whoever cooked, not even the husband, nobody ate. And most of the husbands didn't go to church, but they respected the church. So nobody ate till everybody got home. Nobody ate till the pastor and his family made it there. Then the pastor would bless the table, and then they would all eat. Now watch this here, watch this here. Now, they were only making, let's see, what did my, 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 my grandfather say? Like, maybe a dollar a week or a dollar a month. Something like five cents or 10 cents a day. But they took care of family, I know in my family with my, my uh, grandfather and his sibling, it was 20, 24, 25 of them. So now watch this here. But now, when they, when, when they who, who in here have property? 
that has been left. I know in my family, on my dad's side, we have like, and I, I'm guilty of this, y'all. I'm really dragging my feet, you know, for, but we have like 800 and something acres uh, with oil and gas on it. And I remember when I was their ages, my grandmother always told us, say, you know what, if I'm dead and gone, the only thing I want y'all to do is build a skate ring. Well, I kind of feel that the, the bad shake what it was is that my dad, it was only three of them, but they, they, they held back on paperwork for so long, so many years, and my uncle held back so many years. And then especially when I, it's just me, my flesh, I got to get over it. You know, when I found out that he gave them to a cousin of mine uh, and, and never did nothing, I'm like, well, you know, because I'm, I'm not going to throw all my money into something for everybody. So now when nothing can happen with her, guess who end up with all the papers now? They gave them all to me. Now that means I have to wreck my brain to dig in. Yeah, I have an uncle that's a lawyer right up there in Dallas, not far from the property. I could easily call him and get something to go on. But it's been me. It's been me personally, you know, been me personally. But here's the point I, I, I want to make on reference on, on, on that. You, you've property, property. Who else got property? Raise your hand. See, now watch this here. Watch this here. What we are making now, Papa them wasn't making that way back then. Okay, 800 acres. In fact, we got a street named after us up there in Silly, Brookshire, Baines. We had property there too, but my dad sold that. You know, uh, uh, how many acres? Three? 16. Now watch this here. Watch this. They didn't make what we made now. They were only making a dollar, two dollars way back then. But when they left, they left, it's biblical. They left an inheritance for their children's children. And here we are in the 20th century struggling to make it is because what they did back then is that they respected and feared God and they made sure they took care of the, the preacher they would if they had a house they put the preacher in the house they had an old extra car they'll give the old extra car they'll buy them a suit and everything now I know some of these leaders nowadays have just went overboard with stuff you know but I'm just showing you the principle. That's why you need to read and study God's word for yourself. And if something you don't understand, that's why I'm here. To help you out. To give you an understanding of, of, of God's word. So that's what it's all about. The master key. Serve or to be served while you're here. Just remember this. Whatever good deed that you do. And you know what? Yeah, you got a lot of leaders probably took advantage of people. But you know what? God's still going to bless those people because of their efforts. You know, because of their efforts. So the thing about it is, we're still dealing with this. Hope you all get it. Let's give the Lord a hand. Um, we know...